Oh, let me erase this. I started a problem earlier and I I really let me just erase this. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> oh boy. I started to I was working on a problem and I forgot to erase it. That's what it was. Okay. This is KP the Math G. Um I I tell you uh, it's a, it's a nice day actually it's really kind of rainy but inside it's really nice and uh, and of course it's we're getting ready for some really cold weather here here in this January uh, month here and uh, probably gonna get a little snow uh, and I don't know but we're gonna have some really cold weather and it's going to remind us that it is winter but getting to the side that's a side point we're in part two of applying the second fundamental theorem of the calculus and what does that mean well the second fu fundamental theorem of the calculus is simply this it is an interval it's, it's a definite interval anytime you see something like from say t equals 1 to t equals 5 or something and it doesn't have to be time uh, it could be something else or it could just be the numbers themselves uh, we're looking at something graphically maybe okay and we just want to look at that partition from 1 to 5 we want to see what that looks like that area looks like okay so anyway be that as it may it's a definite integral this is an indefinite if you don't have any numbers there and that's what we've been doing before and you always remember have to put a plus c on the end of it but here you don't so it's from a to b all right from one number to another a and b are numbers and some function delta x and that's equal to now this is the antiderivative but you're plugging in the top number B minus always a minus never a plus okay and then you're going to take the antiderivative and once you take the antiderivative you're plugging the numbers in all right and you're going to figure out there's going to be some value okay uh, and you'll you'll get that so anyway that's the and of course I left off a lot of words uh, if elf is continuous and differentiable well if it's differentiable it is continuous and so on and so forth then you get all of this okay you have to have a little uh, qualifying uh, stipulation for that so yeah you got to for this to work it's got to be differentiable okay over some interval all right there it is so okay so let's see if we can apply that that fundamental theorem let's see if we can and that, and, and in some places we say we're um, evaluating the definite integral that well when you say you're evaluating the definite integral you're saying that you're applying the second fundamental theorem of the calculus to it that's what it is okay that's synonymous to that okay so let's come up with a problem here all right and I want to take the interval from 4 to 7 okay and this is going to be 12 over the square root 3x minus 4 I want to say that's supposed to be plus let's see yeah yes that's plus not minus okay sometimes I have to look I, I I copy a problem and I work it out and then I say well I think I want a plus instead of a minus and I'll change it on another sheet of paper and won't change it on my other paper so you know I do problems several times and sometimes I forget to change the sign but this is it right here now intuitively what do you notice that you might need to rewrite you, you, you do realize that you need to rewrite this right okay 
And in comes my cat. I guess my cat wants to learn a little calculus or she's just hungry. That's probably what it is. The latter's probably true. All right, so anyway, I don't think she wants to learn any calculus. We have a Russian blue. She has her own way, believe me. All right, What's, what are we doing here? Um, intuitively, I don't like a radical in the denominator, but I do. I can rewrite my radical in the first place, so here we go. We're going to rewrite the radical. Now she left. My Russian blue, or my wife's actually, I think she loves my wife more than she loves me. The only reason she loves me is when I get up to feed her. That's really it. I mean, she rubs up against my legs like, okay, um, okay, I know this is just an ulterior motive. It's all it is. Anyway, all right. I won't interrupt any more like that. Back to the lesson. This is to the one half. And remember, this is understood. The exponent is one. The index is understood to be two. So one half right here. One half. And I don't like that being in the denominator. So I'm going to go one more time with this. Uh, let's see. Maybe I can squeeze it down here. We're going from four to seven. Okay, let me kind of dot uh, that a little bit. All right, now, now 12 times 3x plus 4. Now, I'm bringing this up. There's a rule that says that if I have a over b to the n, n being 1 half in this case, this is equal to a times b to the negative n up here like this, okay? So this is now a negative one half, and by the way, dx, negative one half here, dx here. All right. Now, that looks good. I like that. Um, I can actually put the 12 on the outside. All right, so I will do that. You can do that. So I'm going to do that, put the 12 on the outside. So let me move my equal sign over and put my 12 here. That's good. Now I'm just looking at this. So oh, that's what I want to let you be. This is a, um, a substitution type problem. So I'm going to let you, so let you be equal to 3 plus 4. That's it. Not raised to the negative 1 half. I used to do that. But that's not what you do. You're just going to let u be what's underneath the radical here. Okay? Alright. So, u is this. And now... I'm going to do du also. Let's go ahead and do that. I want to come back to you in just a moment. I didn't learn this until much later. And I'm going to show you this method here. There's two ways to do this. Okay. So I want to show you this way. All right. And please try to follow along with me as we do this. All right. So du. Now what's that? Well, the derivative of 3x. The derivative of u is du. The derivative of 3x plus 4 is just 3. And then this is 0, remember. But that's dx. And then remember, I can multiply by 1 third. Okay? 1 third, or actually divide by 3, ever how you want to do that. And remember, these divide out. So 1 third du is equal to dx. Okay. I want this U. I want to get back to the U here. Okay? Because I want to rewrite this so that I want to keep it in terms of U for right now. Okay? So here's what I want to do. Since U, whatever you let U be, you want to find out. We're going to change our, we're going to see if this, we're going to change well, I'll show you. It's gonna. I'll show you how it works out. 
So in other words, so far I've got 12 times one third. All right, and I'm going to integrate, and I'm putting this in terms of u to the negative one half du. That's what I have so far. But I want to change these here. And it makes life a lot easier if I can do that. I'm going to show you how to do it. In place of x, start with the 7. Always the bigger number first. So u is equal to 3 times 7 plus 4. This is 21 plus 4. And that is 25. So instead of 7 here, get a different color so we can make it known here. Instead of 7, I'm going to put 25 right here. Believe me, that's going to make life a little easier doing it that way. Alright? Now, after we try 7, of course, what do we got to try here? 4, yes. We got to do the 4. Alright? Again, I wasn't shown this way until I went to some workshops. So, 4 right here. And 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 plus 4 is 16. Alright, so I'm going to put 16 right here. And this makes it a little easier to go ahead and do. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this now. I'm probably going to have to flip the board over, but that's okay. I may just go ahead and put this here. Okay, 12 times a third, or a third of 12 is 4. Alright, I'm integrating from 16 to 25. U to the negative 1 half du. Alright, let's turn the board over. Let's remember this right here. I hate to turn this over because, well, and it just makes for a long problem. But anyway, let's go ahead. All right, 4, 25, to 16 to 25, u to the negative 1 half. Okay. All right, so right here we have 4. All right, 16 to 25, u to the negative 1 half, du. All right. Now, wait, what happened to our 4 and our 7? Let's go back. Somebody's saying, oh, what happened to that? Remember, when I, whatever I let u be, which this is right here, okay, I'm plugging those numbers into u. 7, 3 times 7 is 21, plus 4 is 25. That's the top number. That's the new top one. And then the bottom one is, uh, that's called, these are called limits of integration. So I'm changing my limits of integration when I do that. And it's for a good reason. All right, 4, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 4 is 16. All right, and that's what I have here, okay? Now, I can integrate this very easily. All right, remember, this is kind of like the power rule. I'm going to add 1, which is 2 halves here. And remember, this is to the 1 half. Alright, so this is actually u to the one half, and usually we put down here one half down here. But remember, when we did the antiderivative, I just say flip it over. So whatever you get here, flip it over right here. This is actually 2 over 1 times u to the one half. Okay? Alright, so that's what that is. So that's what I have here. Alright, so. I have 4 times, okay, and I'm going from 16 to 25, and I have 2u to the 1 half. Now remember, u to the 1 half is just the square root of u, all right, so let's go ahead, let's put this out here, 4 times 2 is 8, leave that outside. Now the square root of u, and I'm going from 16 to 25. Okay, like that. Some people write, they express this as 8 
uh, times the square root of u like this and maybe just do a little 16 to 25 like that that's okay that's perfectly all right either way is fine okay now don't go back to the original we don't need that 3x plus 4 anymore because now we've got the new integrand here okay okay all right so now 8 times the square root of 25 now remember this is a minus sign all right the square root of 16 like that okay now remember uh, let me erase some of this do a little recall what does that second fundamental th theorem of calculus say it says that this is if I'm going from A to B f at x or t whatever dx that is capital f at b minus i'm sorry let me move out of the way here f at a all right so that's what we're doing right here that's the f at b minus the f at a here that's what we're doing Square root of 25 is 5. Square root of 16 is 4. And that's equal to 1. So 8 times 1 is 8. What does that represent? Maybe gallons of oil or water or something like that. Or how far or how much. Okay. Like that. Okay. And you're saying okay and of course this is what we do here you did not have to change these okay uh, we could have left it as 7 and 4 that may have been the way that you've been taught and perhaps maybe I should go ahead and do that and just do the other problem in another video but I do want I did want to introduce this to you just to show you that it does turn out to be the same okay so we could have left it at remember from over when we flipped it over we could have left it at 4 and 7 and if this is confusing you I'm going to leave it at 4 to 7 and I want to show you what you could do now remember we had a 12 on the outside all right and we're integrating from four to seven and this is u to the negative one half du same idea i do believe that's what i had yeah 12 you know like this now this is u all right so u and oh yeah i did i did divide by one third didn't i all right so i did multiply by one third so one third let's remember that because that came from I keep going back and forth right here u is 3x plus 4 du is one third one third du I mean du is 3 dx so one third du is dx okay so this is actually going to be a 4 in front from 4 to 7 u uh, to the negative one half du okay now you can leave this okay I'm going to show you that you get the exact same answer all right we are going from 4 to 7 now remember this is u to the 1 half all right so we found that already so that is 2 u uh, actually here here's what we had okay so u to the 1 half Remember adding 1 to that, 2 over 2, that makes it 1 half. Over a half, which is times 2, is what we did, 2 over 1. Just flip that over. Alright, so this makes this 8 again. Alright, u to the 1 half. Alright, but we're going from 4 to 7. But now we've got to remember what u was. We, we remember in our on the other side, we let u be equal to 3x plus 4. Let me flip it back over. 
I'm sorry I'm going back and forth, but there's 3x plus 4. I'll let you be that, okay? So, u is the weight times the square root of, instead of u, 3x plus 4. All right, now we're going from 4 to 7 like that. And then you plug those in, and, uh, oh, we're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to make it work. Okay, 8 times, okay, the square root of 3 times 7 plus 4, all right, minus the square root of 3 times 4 plus 4, okay, like that. The square, this is going to be 3 times 7 is 21, 21 plus 4 is 25. So we still get up here, so 8 times the square root of 25, alright, minus the square root of 3 times 4 is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16, so you get 16 here. You get the same thing here, you see that? You get the exact same thing here. All right, so 8 times 5 minus 4, all right, is 1, which is just equal to 8. So either way, it'll work. You choose which you're more comfortable with. But I do think that once you start plugging these in and changing this, you don't have to worry about changing it back. Don't change it back because that's what you changed these. That's what you did this for so you wouldn't have to worry about the 3x plus 4. Okay? Now, if you want to leave it here and you're comfortable in your little snuggy place here and this is your uh, this is your comfort zone, then keep it at 4 to 7. But if you want to venture out a little bit and just keep it as you, you still see at, at the, in the end, we get exactly the same thing here as we did here. Okay, it still works out the same. Alright, I like this so I won't have to come back to this. And I just like to show both ways. And here again, you might like one way better than the other. Okay, alright. So anyway, uh, that's what I have in store for you on this one. Um, if I do the other one, that may take a little bit of time. Um, so I'm trying to debate whether I want to continue doing the video or not. Let's do one more. I'm going to try to squeeze this in. I hope I can. And oh boy, I'm going to have a lot of erasing to do, so let me get something to erase with, okay? Uh, I have stuff everywhere. <laughs> this will help me get done quicker. Okay. Maybe I can just do one side of the board, but I have a feeling I'm going to need both sides, so. Alright. And I'm not going to show both, si both ways on this second one. I'm just going to do it the way that I first showed you. Uh, well, I may. I don't know. We'll see. But you see it works both ways. Okay, let's, start, let's go ahead and start on the problem. And then maybe I have room, maybe not. Let's see if we do. Okay, uh, this one is... And I did some work on this a little bit. It's, uh... uh we're going from 0 to pi over 4. Okay. E to the sine 2x cosine 2x dx. And that looks scary, doesn't it? Well, it's not really as scary as it looks. Okay. Now, look. Here's what I'm going to let. Now, you got you, you got to realize that we did this a while back in other videos when we did by substitution. If you got E or something, if you got it as an exponent or in, uh, in the last problem as a square root, you want E to be that. All right? 
He's not going to be this. He's going to be this. Uh, you, I'm sorry. You. You. You is sine 2x. And I'm going to substitute both 0 and pi over, that's just pi over 4, into this x here to change my, okay, these two numbers. So it can be a little easier to work. Now remember, du, du is equal to, uh, the derivative of sine is cosine. Now remember, we got to take the derivative of 2x as well, which is just 2. And so I'm uh, 2 and then dx here. So I've got, oh boy, I've got this all mixed up, don't I? All right, so du is equal to, let's put the 2 in front, 2 cosine 2x dx. Now remember, I have cosine 2x dx right here. Great, but I got a 2 here, so I got to multiply by 1 half. So 1 half on both sides. That gets rid of my 2's right there, and I'm left with this. That's what I want here. So I'm going to have in front of this antigram here, right, 1 half, right? Okay, now this is e to the u du. Because u is sine 2x. There's u. du is all of this. That's it, I got it. But now I want to change these, okay? And I'm glad I learned it this way. It's really easy to me, but now I want it to be easy for you too. Let's get a different color. Let's say we get blue. All right, so you, that's what you concentrate on when you want to change these numbers. Sine of 2x. Ah, uh, I think this blue's about to go out. Let me get another blue one. Okay. All right. So let's see. So u is sine of two. Now remember, we're starting off with the top number. I want to fill in this one right here. All right. So pi over four. All right. So two over one times pi over four is equal to sine 2 pi over 4, which by the way, that's just pi over 2, isn't it? Pi over 2. Sine, 2 goes into 4 one time, 2 goes into 4, 2 goes into 2 one time, and 2 goes into 4 two times, so sine pi over 2. Oh yeah, we got to remember what that is. Okay, so here's the graph of sine right here, isn't it? So here's zero, and remember this first one is pi over two. What's that value right there? What's that y value? That's one, isn't it? Okay, so that is equal to one. So I'm putting one right there. i got to figure out what this one is. So now what are we? We got this one checked off. What are we checking off now? This one. Zero. Alright, so remember we're plugging it into you. Okay, not all of this, just you. Keep that in mind. I I made that mistake before. Alright, so in this case now, we're plugging in sine to now the bottom, the lower, the lower integral number is zero. All right, two times zero is zero, and sine of zero, right there. It's just zero, isn't it? And that's how you do that. If you can get past that and understand that I'm letting you be this, Whatever e to the u or whatever ln sine two x whatever. Okay, the square root of sine two x. I 
got my cosine 2x, I got that. dx, I got that. That's what I wanted. Alright, so keep in mind, this is all of this. U is sine 2x. I've got my numbers right. I've got my one half where it needs to be. And I'm ready to integrate this. E is easy to integrate, isn't it? Alright, so let's do that. Erase all this. I think we can fit it all on one side here, this one. Okay, now, this is equal to one half. Alright, now I'm going E to the U, and I am going from 0 to 1. Okay, like that. So here we go, one half. E to the 1 minus E to the 0. Okay, remember that definition is always F at A, F at A, F at B rather, minus F at A. That's what we're doing here. That definition of the definite integral from A to B, that's equal to this. And that's what we're doing here. Alright. Well, E to the 1 is just E. But what's E to the 0? Yeah, that's right. It's 1. So now if you want to, you can distribute the 1 half. So 1 half E minus 1 half 